There is an academy where little girls are trained to become lethal agents. From shooting at three to driving at five, they grow into skilled operatives, devoid of names and attachments. But for 83, the rule of no attachment never sat right. Despite her exceptional skills, she longs for a taste of normalcy, for a life beyond missions and espionage. After some years, she is now grown up. 83. Pay attention. This next mission is crucial. Hardman's voice echoed through dimly lit room. 83 glanced up from the magazine. Yes, sir, she replied, trying to hide the guilt in her voice. This arms dealer, Victoria, she's a real threat. We need her captured alive within two days, Hardman continued his expression stern. Understood, sir, 83 responded mentally preparing herself for the task ahead. As he embarks on her latest mission to capture Victoria, a dangerous armed dealer, 83 finds herself facing unexpected challenges. Amidst the chaos of the operation, she discovers her own identity. 83 wanted to leave her past behind and start a new life. She was tired of fighting and wanted to embrace her life with a fresh perspective. Therefore, she decided to abandon her mission midway. When her boss called, she remained silent, pretending as if she had passed away. Then she reappeared in the city. Here she was adopted by a family. 83 is now known as Megan. She escapes her old life as a secret agent and started a new chapter as a high school student in Newton. But fitting in wasn't that easy, especially with Liz, the sarcastic daughter of the family she is staying with, giving her a hard time. On her first day at school, Megan tries to blend in but ends up standing out in a wild outfit that draws unwanted attention. Gooch, the school bully, wastes no time in teasing her, making her feel even more out of the place. Luckily, Liz steps in to help by giving Megan some more normal clothes to wear. During the morning assembly, Megan never kicks in as he's supposed to speak in front of the entire school. She meets Roger, a geeky kid who runs the school's audiovisual stuff. Megan influenced by a movie she watched initially dismisses him as a nerd. As Megan takes the stage, instead of being welcomed, she is met with laughter and teasing from her classmates. They make fun of her, even suggesting she should go back to Canada where they think she is from. It's tough start for Megan in her quest for a normal life, but she is determined to find her place in this new world. As Megan tries to navigate high school life, she finds herself drawn to Cash. She started liking him, the popular band leader, but her assumption about cheerleaders being mean based on movies led her to turn down their lunch invitation. In biology class, she befriends Roger, who is clearly interested in her, but Megan's focus remains on Cash. Megan's chance to get close to Cash comes when they are assigned as lab partners. However, other girls in the class are also interested in Cash. They try to persuade her to choose another partner. They even suggest that Cash like girls who play the school's mascot. Oblivious to their scheming, Megan auditions for the mascot role and gets selected, much to her delight. During mascot practice, Megan's skill come in handy when she effortlessly takes down a group of masked men attempting to kidnap her. But her victory turns into embarrassment when she realizes they are just troublemakers from a rival college and the whole incident is filmed and shared online. Megan is now gone viral about her skills. Meanwhile, at Prescott's base, Victoria confronts Hardman about his unethical methods of training young girls to be assassins. She shows interest in 84 and plans to use her to escape. When they discover the viral video of Megan's fight, they mistakenly believe she is working for a rival group. The next day at school, Megan becomes a sensation overnight, hailed for her fighting powers. She even gets invited to a high school party. But her excitement is short-lived when she is kidnapped by people from Prescott on her way home. Megan, I don't want to go back, Hartman. I just want to be normal. Hartman, you belong to Prescott, Megan. You owe us. At Good's party, Megan finds herself conflicted when she sees 84, now Heather, and ends up kissing Cash. The next day, Hartman disguises himself as the school bus driver to warn Megan about Victoria's escape, but she refuses to return. Hartman, 
You are in danger, Megan. Come back to Prescott, where we can protect you, Megan. I'll take my chances here. Thanks. After a car chase with Heather, Liz ends up in the hospital, leading Megan to open up about her past. They bond, preparing for homecoming together. But the night takes a turn when Chase turns out to be shallow. I thought Chase was different, but he's just like the rest. Roger, sorry Megan, Heather asked me first. In a chaotic showdown at homecoming, Megan and Liz fight Heather, ultimately winning with Liz's unexpected bravery. But their victory is short-lived when Victoria kidnaps their family. Megan, we have to stop her, Liz. Our family is in danger. Liz, I am with you, Megan. Let's do this. In the final showdown, Hartman arrives to help Megan defeat Victoria, restoring some semblance of safety. Megan, being grateful, shares a moment with Hartman before whisking Roger away for a surprise helicopter ride. Megan, thanks for coming, Hartman. I couldn't have done it without you, Hartman. You have proven yourself, Megan. But remember, you'll always be a part of Prescott. And so Megan's journey of self-discovery and redemption comes to an end. As the helicopter fades into the distance, we are left with the reminder that no matter where life takes us, the bonds we form and the choices we make define what we truly are. And hey, if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe our channel. We hope you like our videos. Thank you. Bye.